Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. This is Yankee and the Brit. And today we're going to talk about Westbrook to the Lakers. <laughs> I don't know, Maddie. That's a good one because yeah. when they first floated that, I was like, no way the <laughs> Lakers are going to trade for Westbrook. I mean, don't get me wrong. Westbrook is must-see TV. Four out of five years averaging a triple-double. Double. Never been heard of. You know, uh, Oscar Robinson, the only other guy to average a triple-double. I just wonder if there's enough basketballs to go around in L.A. And i don't not sure how he yeah. fits. I think it's an experiment. Yeah, that's the key word for it, isn't it, is experiment. And I like that. Um yeah, I think every I think everybody's taken so by surprise by it, and so like, especially a lot of people in the media, US media, uh, are really against it because like everybody's just saying you need to surround LeBron and AD with shooters. You need to surround LeBron and AD with shooters, and that's all. Like that's all it was, and then they've gone out and they've got some good shooters, like some guys who can definitely hold down the three point, but are not elite. Their elite signing is Russell Westbrook. who can't shoot the three. Three is horrendous. But isn't it the thing that what the Lakers really need is some durable stars and Westbrook rarely misses a game doesn't really take, and he plays 100% all of the time. They just need to get into the playoffs in a strong position in order to go from there. So with Westbrook, you can rest LeBron, you can rest AD, and then in the playoffs, see how it goes from there. Well, your 100% is exactly kind of my point, where you said he plays 100%. They need to get this guy to slow down to about 80 at times. Yeah, with the offense because LeBron's not a spring chicken anymore. That running gun on the floor, I don't know if his thirty-five-year-old body is going to keep up. Don't get me wrong; he is a supreme specimen of an athlete. But Father Time does catch up sooner or later. My only question is: Can LeBron play off the ball? Because he says he can, and I know deep down when he says it, he believes that shit. But I really think he's the type of guy that he looks at the floor. They're down by six, and he was like, "Just give me that." You know what I mean? It's just in his yeah. DNA. Whereas, I don't know if he can step back. If he can step back and play off the ball to extend his career and literally let AD be the captain of that team, Westbrook run the point and him be, you know, the X factor, then I think they're great. Because like you said, they're putting shooters around him, even though they're doing a lot of old shooters. So we'll see it. But it worked in Miami, you know, but – I think it's the grand experiment because with Russell West, West, Westbrook, he's been MVP. He's been an all-star, an all-star MVP, triple doubles. The only thing this guy doesn't have is a ring. So is he willing to change his game too to get that ring? That's why I think this is a great experiment that is either going to be amazing or blow up right in front of our face. And either way, it's must-see TV. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting thing. So this happens a lot in UK sport where you play for the city or town or whatever that you're from just because our system means like you go to the club that's closest to you who wants to, who scouted you and you get brought up by them and eventually you'll be playing in front of your fans and you were one of them. And that that happens a lot uh, in in the UK, like often the captain will be somebody that's from the city, knows the city well, like that kind of thing, especially in football and uh, and in rugby as well. And Westbrook is from LA. So imagine him coming out and thinking, I will do anything to win my championship ring for LA in the city that I love. And I think people forget how emotions get invested in this. He doesn't... In Oklahoma, he's not from Oklahoma. He didn't. He was his allegiances were to him, but now the allegiances change. The allegiances to the city. It's where he's from. It's where his family. His family's from, and those uh, those gold and purple. That's his. They're his colors, and I think he definitely could change. I don't think LeBron actually has to play off the ball. I don't think you have to ask Westbrook to change too much. You just have to say to Westbrook, let possibly the greatest player of all time have the ball 
you play 100% on transition, you go get those buckets for us because we don't have the place to go get those. But the decision-making in the key times, give the ball to LeBron James and LeBron James will have to just not take as many points that night, but up his assist total. And at this stage in his career, LeBron has nothing else to achieve apart from just going out and winning more and more NBA championships, more NBA championships. So I think you're able to have him. So you don't really have to ask AD to change. AD can just play. You don't really ask Westbrook to change that much apart from just giving LeBron the ball in the big decision-making things. So he can still play 100%, but give LeBron the ball in the big decision-making times. The person who you have to ask change is the most mature the person who can play this game at point card of assisting everybody, making everybody else get their buckets. And LeBron James will get 20 to 30 points from just being on the floor for 30 minutes a game. Yeah, the only two players, though, I've ever in my lifetime seen LeBron James defer to on a basketball court was Dwayne Wade. Even though LeBron was still the alpha, there was times. And Rondo, Rajan Rondo is the only other guy I've ever seen LeBron Deferred to, and I think that's because Rondo's so known as a uh, basketball savant, like one of the smartest guys in the league. Yeah, but that's if what I'm they saying. can figure out the who's the point guard and how you're going to run it, because LeBron always plays point forward. But that's that's the thing when you have two of the top five players in the world, plus Westbrook, who is probably a top ten player in the world. If they don't figure it out, that is completely ego and on that. <laughs> yeah, and I mean. Russell Westbrook's a guaranteed Hall of Famer, right? Like he just All is. Three of those doesn't guys. Have that, yeah. Even if he doesn't have that championship ring, guaranteed Hall of Famer. AD, come back with your head in the game, ready to play, and you'll score loads and loads of points. And the thing is, with Drummond, uh, 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 Dwight Howard as well, you don't have to ask AD to play that many minutes. They can save themselves for the playoffs and Westbrook can just play his regular season game of 100 miles an hour, score loads of points, go get your triple-double, and he'll win you games by himself in the regular season. LeBron and AD can just come on, play 20, 30 minutes, you know, make sure the win's in the bag, and then and then leave, and don't play that much of the regular season. LeBron James is going to have to give up his, any ambitions he has for a regular season MVP. AD will have to give up any ambitions he has for a regular season MVP. Well... Hey, guys, you're in the Lakers now, and that's all about championships. I don't care about MVPs. Yeah, and I got one other point, but there's guys like Schroeder who screwed themselves, could have had four years, 84 million. Yeah. Now he's going to be lucky to get seven somewhere else a year. But part of me thinks, because you know that when Rob Palenka was going to trade for Westbrook, they went to AD, they went to LeBron, and they said, you cool with this. And part of me wonders if LeBron went, I'm really cool with this because I'm going to win a championship with Westbrook when Kevin Durant couldn't. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of stuff that's going around at the minute. And with Kawhi Leonard's snub of him as well, when Kawhi Leonard didn't even want to try to win one with Westbrook. James Harden ha wasn't able to win one with Westbrook. KD can't win one with Westbrook. I don't think LeBron's that vindictive. I think he's kind of like... I, I think he just goes, hey... Westbrook can win games by himself. Therefore, I don't have to win games by myself. But do you think the conversation went, when Westbrook went to LeBron's house, do you think it went, hey, man, for the, from LeBron's point of view, did it go, hey, uh, hey, Russell, you take the ball, I'll play off, I'll score, I'll score when we need to and stuff like that, but you're our point guard. Or do you think it went to Westbrook going, all I want is a championship, man. Show me how, lead the way. And I think LeBron James playing point guard of the point anyway and running the running the running the game would be the best way for these three to go because he'll pick them out at the right times. There's no there's never been a question on Russell Westbrook's style of play, his talent of play. It's all his decision making. Westbrook's shooting isn't even like terrible. To average a triple double, you're not gonna have terrible shooting. It's just he can't shoot the three. So Keep him away from the arc. Don't give him the ball there. <laughs> and I think that conversation went like this. All three of them are sitting down, and I think all three of them just said, we'll do whatever it takes to win a championship. And I think this is how it'll start. I don't know how it'll finish. 
we're going to see Westbrook being the point guard for the first three quarters of a game. And then if it's close, I think you see LeBron take the ball in the fourth. But yeah. I don't think that's the worst idea because now you're keeping LeBron from having to play as strenuous of offensive minutes. So we'll actually get to see LeBron play some top-notch defense again, except – and don't get me wrong. When LeBron needs to play defense, he gets it, right? He does it. But he's getting older. He can't run the floor both sides like he used to. So now maybe in some games we see LeBron – do what Kobe did. You know, Kobe, there's a couple games where he barely shot because he was off, and he's like, I'm just going to lock this dude down and help my team win by defense. Maybe you'll yeah, see LeBron, LeBron do some James stuff like do that. that, too. Yeah, LeBron James can definitely do that. Defensive Player of the Year award for uh, LeBron James as well. Um, I think it's interesting when we're talking about this lack of fit. You've got to take uh, Westbrook is a Laker at heart, so any lack of defense that Westbrook has his defense is going to be heightened. He doesn't want to let his city down, his family down, that kind of thing. I think this is something that really needs to be looked into. But also another thing that needs to be looked into is the fact that James Harden and Kyrie Irving are both playing for the Brooklyn Nets. And there wasn't a problem of ball sharing and that kind of stuff. That wasn't a problem for the Brooklyn Nets. That problem was... They didn't play enough together because everybody was injured all the time. And they came up against Giannis and Atacumbo, who's just going to like tear the place up every time he plays, uh, every time he plays a game of basketball. So they can just look at that and say, right, we're going to do what they did. If Russell Westbrook should go, hey, if James Harden can do it, I can do it. Anything for a championship. My last thought on this whole thing, too, is so let's say you got those three guys who are somebody's always going to be double teamed in, in that kind of offense, right? If it's AD, if it's LeBron, or if it's, oh, shit, here comes Russell, let's clog the lane. So now it opens up for the other shooters, right? And everybody's like, they got good shooters, not great shooters. But look at guys like the greatest shooters in the world, Ray Allen, right? When you put him with Kevin Durant, his percentage went up. Why? Because he had another second to think before he shot because nobody's right up on it. So yeah. all these shooters' percentage, if they're 35, should be 38. If they're 30, it should be 33. You know, because yeah. they're going to have an extra shooters. second to shoot the ball. Yeah, good good shooters under pressure become great shooters when they're open. Yeah. Like it's when you see – I think it's really difficult to understand our level of basketball, where I have no level of basketball. In the UK, we play a bit in school – I used to have a good layup until I stopped growing at the age of 15 and now everybody's just towering over me so I can't lay the ball up anymore. Um, but um, uh, you, don't, you don't realize how much a second means to these guys and you don't realize it until you see those three-point drills that they're all doing and all three-point shooters in the NBA, when they're open and they've got time and they shoot arounds, can go perfect shooting on three-point drills all the time. And I feel like that's what the Lakers have gone for they haven't said, oh, we need the best three-point shooters. They've gone, we just need to find good three-point shooters on a good deal so we don't have to give up too much. This whole thing about age as well, they're thinking about that in their trades. They don't want to have to give up too much for players because they know they're going to have to get new players in. Also, the players that they've got rid of, people like Kyle Kuzma, I think it was clear that him and LeBron just weren't going to work. You know, like Kuzma, I... I think he's going to have a good career elsewhere, but I think he just kind of decided, yeah, we're not going to work, so let's get rid, you know? And I think the Lakers are overall better today than they were two, three months ago. And I know I'm the one that brought up age, but I should point out AD is only like 25 or 26, but there, it was just the rest of it. Um, yeah, I guess it's going to be a great experiment to watch. Um, I am not a Lakers fan, but I've always been a Kobe fan, even though I'm a Bucks fan. So I've watched a lot of Lakers and then stopped watching them. Then they got LeBron, so there must see TV again. So I'm excited to just see what happens with the Lakers this next season. And I'm kind of hoping my Bucks see them in the finals. Yeah, and I mean, for coming from the UK, like, so I'm a, I'm a massive sports fan, so I know – most sports teams in the states i'm i'm good with sports teams and stuff like that but if you say if you say to anybody in the uk name a basketball team they'll say la lakers and if you say name a basketball player they'll say 
LeBron James. You have the LA Lakers with LeBron James. So they're probably the biggest supported team around the world. They're the Dallas Cowboys of uh, of basketball. They're the Manchester United of basketball, you know, and I'll be watching them closely like I was watching the Brooklyn Nets closely as well. When you get those three stellar players in one team, you've got to watch them really. Well, that was a pretty good place to leave us, Maddie, because you queued us up. Everybody keep watching because, as Maddie said, the Cowboys, we're going to be talking some football real <laughs> soon. All right, guys, thanks for checking us out. One world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio. Cheerio.